I need a curtain and I need one without spending much money at all. I'm doing a staging wall out in my garage. And so I wanted a curtain that's gonna match a lot of things. I went to the thrift store, nothing. I don't wanna spend that much money on fabric because like I said, this is a staging wall out in the garage. So I didn't wanna do that because that's expensive. I went to the hardware stores, the curtains for this size of a wall that I'm doing, too expensive. So what am I doing? Canvas. Well, this is what I wanted to tell you. Most of you might not realize that the um, canvas drop cloths, this is the six by nine, but it's 10 ounces. Six by nine, 10 ounces. Let me show you this real quick. The 10 ounces actually feels like regular fabric. This, you're gonna be surprised. So this is the key to making these curtains, is using the 10 ounce fabric. It doesn't feel like what you think a paint, it's not, I mean, it's not as heavy as a drop cloth like a lot of painters use, but it also doesn't feel cheap and flimsy. The 10 ounce is the key to use 10 ounces. Now, I'm gonna show you how quick and easy this is to make a curtain. Now, I need a curtain that's 91 inches tall, and most people don't need that long of a, uh, that big of a curtain in their house, but you can make it any size you want. These things come in all sorts of sizes. I got the six by nine, which means it's six foot wide, nine foot tall, and I only paid $14.98. And that's how much it is at Lowe's. But you can get them at Home Depot, Menards, Ace Hardware, any of the hardware stores, even at painter shops. It's just, make sure you get the 10 ounce drop cloth, canvas drop cloth. It feels like a grain sack. You can paint it to make it look like a grain sack. And um, it's like a heavier linen, but not as good quality as a linen. But you're gonna be surprised. Look at all this fabric. So I got a six by nine. You can get whatever size you need. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty good deal on fabric. So we're gonna be making curtains. And I'm only gonna make one sewing line and one zigzag stitch line. That is it. Okay, so first thing is, you gotta lay out your fabric. Second key. <laughs> wear clean socks, don't wear shoes, because you're gonna be walking all over this. It's a very big piece of fabric. So take your shoes off, work it in your socks so you don't get your fabric dirty. Next, step two, measure out your piece. Now I know I need this curtain from the bottom to the top of the curtain rod is 91 inches. I just need to measure out my 91 inches here and then lock in my tape measure. Okay. There we go. Locked it in at 91 inches. Then I can just lay it out on my fabric. Okay, step two, make a line at the top 91 inches. So I'm gonna measure several different spots, 91 inches, and then I'm gonna draw a line because I will know that at the 91 inches, that is the top of my curtain. So I'm gonna measure in several different spots, so I make sure I have a straight line, and then I'm gonna have one line going across the top, and that'll be at my 91 inch mark. Okay, next step. See my pink line right here? That's 91 inches. I need to add on four inches, because four inches is what I usually allow for a casing for a curtain rod. So I'm gonna add four inches on here and draw another line. Okay, next step. So I drew a line and that up, so I have my 91 inches and then I added four inches on for my cutting line. That's where I'm gonna cut, because that's all the fabric I'm gonna need. Now you have your choice, canvas. This material will fray when you cut it. If you don't do a surged edge or a zigzag edge, or if you don't wanna do either of those, you can use pinking shears. So the pinking shears look like this, and they will also help your, uh, your fabric from fraying. So if you don't want to have to go along your cut edge with a zigzag stitch to keep your fabric from fraying, just use a pair of pinking shears. So I'm gonna cut along my line that I just drew. I'm gonna cut along that with my pinking shears, and then I'll show you what's next. Okay, next step. So here's our 91 inch pink line. That's the top of our curtain. This, this whole section here is gonna be our casing for the curtain rod. You can fold it. You're gonna fold it just like that. You're gonna fold it, let me turn it around so you can see it. 
pink line will be right on the top. So you're gonna take it, you're gonna fold it over, and your pink line is gonna be at the top of your curtain. Just, so you're gonna go all the way down your curtain and fold it and pin it. It's a big piece of fabric, so it's hard to show it to you. So just like that. My pink line is at the top. I take a pin, and I'm gonna pin right along the bottom. And then we're gonna take it to the sewing machine and we're just gonna do a straight stitch all the way down the bottom of our casing. Cause I'm gonna keep folding it all the way down so that my pink line is right at the top of the casing. That way I know it's 91 inches. So there's my casing right there. I'm gonna pin all the way down this line. I'm gonna take a sewing machine and I'm gonna do a straight stitch all the way down that line. So let's go ahead and do that and then we are done. Okay, so I've got it pinned all the way down. And I'm gonna take a sewing machine and I, like I said, I'm just gonna do a straight stitch right along this bottom border. So I'll go ahead and do that. And I'll show ya. Okay. There's a lot of fabric here. Okay, so. There's the top of my fabric up here. I'm gonna put my foot down. And then I'm gonna put my needle in the down position. And, and I'm gonna lock it in that down position. And I do this because there's so much fabric that um, when you're trying to push this through, the fabric is heavy, it's gonna to wanna to pull. And then it's gonna slide out from underneath your foot. So keep your needle in the down position. It's gonna help you a lot because this fabric is heavy. Okay, I'm gonna do a straight stitch. I'm gonna go forward, so I'm gonna back, then I'm gonna back stitch to lock in my stitch. So forward a couple stitches. And then I'm gonna go backwards a couple stitches. Okay, take my needle out. And continue forwards the whole rest of the way. And I'm just following along my edge. When you get to your end, make sure you back stitch and forward stitch to lock that in. these turned out. There we go. There's our casing. It's on this side. This is the wrong side of the fabric. This is what's going to be up against the wall. And you see my little pinking shears edge. Very nice and neat. But this is where your curtain rod is going to go through. Look at how easy that is. And this is, like I said, this was a nine foot tall canvas. Look at the quality of this fabric. You cannot buy the fabric for this, this economical. I mean, I paid $14.98 at Lowe's and it's a 10 ounce canvas. But on another video that I'm gonna be doing for Dixie Belle, I'm actually gonna paint, I think, some stencils on here just to give it just that extra like wow factor so it's not just uh, one color. But you don't need to do that. This is, I mean, this is a nice tan curtain. Great fabric, economical. It comes up to, I believe, 24 foot pieces. You can get them 24 foot tall. So if you have a large vaulted ceiling, and I know to have curtains made or even dry cleaned for a large vaulted ceiling, I've paid $150 just to have mine dry cleaned at my last house. And so um, why not make them out of painters? canvas or drop cloths and you can get at any hardware store and all you have to do is make a channel at the top and put your rod through. I'm going to hang these up and let you see what they look like. Um, get them all ironed and uh, yeah, once again, another thrifty idea. <laughs> well, this is Amy with Fashion Toppings and AJ's Vintage Designs. Until next time, I hope you have a great day. Mm -hmm.